Hey everyone, Xeon over here from Nintendo Life, and today we're going to help you open up the Rabella Wetlands Skyview Tower in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Now, this video will contain minor environmental and gameplay spoilers, but nothing pertaining to the main story. So if you're looking for the Rabella Wetlands Skyview Tower, you'll find it stationed in the East Nekluda region, southeast of Central Hyrule and southeast of the Sahasara Slopes Skyview Tower, which we also have a guide for. Now the thing that makes this tower tricky to activate is the fact that its entrance and surroundings are completely covered in thorns. Now you might think that you can just light them on fire and they'll burn away. That's certainly what I thought, but one fire arrow will quickly remind you that it's downpouring and you can't start a fire in the rain. Now we'll try and give you a subtle hint on how to open this tower in case if you'd like to still try and solve it for yourself. So just a bit south of the tower is a family camping whose village is under attack, so they fled for safety. They don't really have anything to do with unlocking the tower, but you can try and take a lesson from them by paying attention to how they're taking shelter from the rain and what that's allowed them to do. Now, if you think you have the solution down, keep giving it a shot if it's not exactly working. This tower can be pretty finicky. I honestly wasn't sure I was doing the right thing myself at first, but stick with your gut and you've probably got it. But here's the answer if you still need a hand. So near the southern perimeter of the Ring of Thorns, you'll find a little sheltered area with a cooking pot and a piece of flint on the ground. And there should be a gap where you can walk right into this area. Now, if you strike the flint that's on the ground with a weapon, maybe you can use that knight's broadsword that's sitting on that crate right there if you, for some reason, don't have one. But once you strike the flint, it'll light a fire underneath the pot since it's being shielded from the rain. You can then either use some type of wooden weapon or light an arrow with the fire and burn up the thorns that are also being protected from the rain. Once you've done this, you'll have access to the inside circle and you'll be right in front of the tower. However, there are still a ton of thorns completely blocking access to the tower and the only way in is to find a way to burn them up. If you look around the area, you'll notice not one, not two, but three whole Hyrule Restoration Material stations that are free for you to use. And this right here is the key to solving this puzzle. Essentially, you'll want to take a bunch of the wooden planks and make a shelter out of them that's long enough to balance on the scaffolding on each side of the tower near the entrance. You want to make sure you can connect these boards together as straight as possible as rain still may be able to get in and you'll have a harder time starting a fire if they're a little offset. I ended up having a problem where I was able to burn some of the thorns down, but not the thorns in the center. So I ended up having to use extra boards on the side of the thorns to protect rain from coming in that way. It was very strange. So once you have your shelter made, you can either lob a fire fruit in there, you can fire one with an arrow. You can also try swinging a weapon that has fire properties. I think there's another shelter actually in this area that has a bunch of wood that you can actually start a fire with as well if you have some extra flint on you. But if you're still struggling, one more solution presented itself after we had already thought we thought of everything. We were standing in one place for a while capturing footage and we noticed that it stopped raining and that meant we could just burn the thorns away, right? So we tried it out and it actually worked. But to make sure that this wasn't just a fluke, a glitch, we had to try it out a couple more times. Now your mileage is really gonna vary with this method, but we had two instances where we waited roughly about 12 in-game hours and the rain just stopped. But if you end up waiting longer than 24 in-game hours and the rain hasn't ended, try going back over by the family and rest at their campfire until the morning. Then go back near the tower and see if the rain lets up in a couple more hours. Now we're not really sure why this happens, but we're thinking maybe it's some sort of failsafe where the game tries to throw you a bone in case if your construction skills just aren't working out. Regardless though, it's a loophole that you can fall back on if you need it. Now, as always, we appreciate hearing from you in the comments down below. Let us know if this video gave you the help you needed. And of course, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more videos like this, more Tears of the Kingdom guides and Tears of the Kingdom coverage, then why don't you burn down those thorns that are surrounding that subscribe button and then ring that notification bell to be notified whenever we put up new videos. Thank you all so much for watching. I'm Zian from Nintendo Life. Stay safe out there and we will see you all next time.